A method of grafting Japanese maples that I've tried and had some really good success with is using these humidity domes. I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step guide of how to graft a Japanese maple and then make sure that graft heals using one of these humidity domes. Let's get started. Welcome to The Plant Doctor where we explore all things landscape, garden, and yard maintenance. Join us as we explore a vast array of horticulture topics such as plant propagation, pruning, landscape product reviews, plant nursery tours, and much, much more. So the first thing we need to talk about are the tools you need to get started. You need some pretty basic tools here to graft. We need a roll of paper towels. You need a grafting knife, or what I found out, if you have a very sharp, brand new box blade, you can use a box blade. This is what I've gone to. I used to have a grafting knife that I used. I started using a box blade just because I can change these blades out readily. They're cheap. It works just as well. We need something called buddy tape. This is B-U-D-D-Y, buddy tape. We need some rubbing alcohol. We need some labels. So I've got a bag of labels here. These are actually labels off of Japanese maples that I did earlier that did not take. So we can reuse these. We need a label. We're going to write the cultivar name on the label. And then one thing that I would recommend using is a UV resistant pen or a pencil. The first time I started grafting Japanese maples several years ago, I used a Sharpie marker on these and it looked really good for about three or four months. And then the UV light got a hold of it and it started fading out the ink. And I wasn't 100% sure of the cultivar that I had. And so I found these UV pens, UV resistant pens. I'm gonna use that. And the sunlight will not fade the ink. So those are the materials we need along with, of course, rootstock. All right, so this is our rootstock. This is green Japanese maple. I order these off of the West Coast. You can grow these from seed. So oftentimes when we select a Japanese maple for ornamental features, a name cultivar like a blood good or emperor one or sangu kaku, I mean, there's thousands of them out there, right? We lose root vigor and integrity. So as we, as we progress through more ornamental features, some of the root vigor we lose. So if you just do a cutting off one of those plants, It'll look great for three or four years, but what will happen is usually it'll die. So we select a rootstock, a, a Japanese maple that has really, really good vigorous roots, and then we can go and graft onto that with some scion wood. So let's go out to the backyard. I'm gonna show you how to collect some scion wood. So the next thing we have to do is select our scion wood. You wanna do this on a tree that is not stressed. So we got a really good rain last night into this morning. The stems on this tree are just full of water right now. If you think about it, we're gonna take a limb off of a tree, remove it from its source of water, and it's gotta reattach to another plant. So we want to make sure that the moisture content in these limbs are just as full as possible when we select our scion wood. We want to select a limb that is supple, but not too supple and we refer to that as semi-hardwood. And I, this is a good limb right here to do it. I'm gonna count down three nodes. A node is a site of vegetative growth, so three sets of leaves. One, two, three. Just above that fourth node, I'm gonna make a cut. Before you make a cut, make sure your hand snips are clean. So before I came out here, I took alcohol and rubbed these down really good. And there's our scion. Now from here, I'm going to remove the leaf material, but keep the petiole. So a petiole is what attaches the leaf blade to the stem. So we're going to remove these leaf blades and we're left with something like this. So we've moved back inside and I have multiple camera angles for you. I'm going to get some really good B-roll film from the camera phone here and then I've got my GoPro doing the main film. So what we need to do is this. The first thing we need to do is we need to clean our rootstock trunk. So we're gonna take some alcohol and we're gonna rub this down really good. We don't want any fungus or bacteria getting in on this. All right. Then we're gonna take our scion that we cut earlier and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna rub this down 
We'll make sure that that is nice and clean. So there's our scion. I'm going to lay my scion on top of my paper towel that we just used to clean with. We've also got to clean the blade. So think of this as surgery, right? We're kind of performing surgery on a tree. And if you were to go into surgery, you're not going to, or hopefully not let somebody just willy nilly cut on you with a blade that has not been properly cleaned. So we want to make sure we get all this really clean. So our blade's clean, our rootstock's clean, our scion is clean. And now what we want to do is we want to, I like to use the outer curve. If there's a curve in my trunk, I'll use the outer curve. And I'm just going to bend this over a little bit. And we're going to make a little incision, maybe half to three quarters of an inch, just peeling back the bark just a little bit. And I'll try to get the camera angle where you guys can see that right there. All right, so when you look in there, what we're looking for, you're going to see a little bit of white, but you also want to see some green cambium. So cambium is the vascular tissue of the plant. What our goal here is to get the cambium of the rootstock to match up with cambium of our scion wood. They'll fuse together, and then the water and the nutrients from the rootstock will then go up into our scion. So the next thing we want to do is we want to make a cut just like we were whittling a stick. Okay, so something about like that. That's what we're looking for. It comes down to a narrow point. And what I like to do is I'm going to try to get that cambium to line up on both sides and in order to do that I'll almost put that in there crossways a little bit so I know somewhere and I'll try to zoom in here where you can see this see how that cambium is barely sticking out the side and I've got it leaning over towards the left hand side of the rootstock so I know somewhere from this point to that point I do have cambium contact all right so we're going to leave that there. We're going to take a piece of buddy tape. Buddy tape is perforated, so we can just pull it off just like that. I've got to readjust my cambium, or excuse me, <laughs> readjust my scion wood. And we're going to wrap. This is flexible. And our goal here is the bottom half of our buddy tape meets up with the bottom half of the previous wrap around the rootstock if that makes any sense. I'm gonna go up, see how that's about halfway. Same here, the bottom half's gonna meet where we just came around there. And I'm gonna go up, and there we have it, okay? So what I do, what do I do from here? I'm going to take my pruners, and what I'm going to do is you can see on your rootstock where branches come off. So you, you'll see these circles around the branch, and those are no, that's where nodes are at. That's where the vegetation is going to come out. I want to go up at least one, if not two, circles or nodes above where I made my cut. Don't make your cut off of your rootstock on the same area where you just applied your scion wood. Reason being is the rootstock is gonna die back all the way to that next set of nodes. So if I've got a circle here or nodes, and I've got circle here or nodes, I don't wanna go below this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this off about right there. And that's gonna leave me some vegetation on there as well. So we don't need any of this, this is removed. So I went ahead and did three of these. I'm gonna show you what to do next. Once we have them in our container, this at the bottom is gonna be where it can hold water that it's not perforated at all. I'm gonna pour like a quarter to a half inch of water, just enough to cover the bottom of this. And we are going to also take some daconil. So daconil is a fungicide. 
We're just going to kind of spray some around. So what this is going to do is help deter any funguses that are going to want to grow in this super high humidity environment. So now we can take our humidity dome and place it over the top like that. And we're just going to leave it. I'm going to leave it like this for a month. I'm going to put it on my porch. It gets indirect sunlight, which is perfect for this. The good thing about the dome is that it has vents, two vents on the top, two vents on the side. So after a month, here's a pro tip for you. After a month, if you want to know if your scion wood has taken or not, thump the bottom of your rootstock and the petioles that are on those buds should just fall off. If they fall off, then you know that your uh, scion has taken. If they stay on, your scion probably has not taken. And so after a month, we'll do the thump check and hopefully all three of these will be good. And we can slowly start to open up some of these vents and let some air in and some moisture out. But it's imperative right now that these stay in a super humid environment. Another pro tip I want to show you. I did this earlier in the spring using these four inch pots and I can get 10 four inch pots in there, but over the summer, my root stock's grown up. I'm doing this in late August. I had to bump my root stock from these four inch pots all the way to these one gallon pots. So I can't get as many in here. I can only get three one gallons in here. I could get 10 of these in this in a four, four inch pot. So if you wanted to go down to a four inch pot with your root stock, you can do more of these per humidity dome. Guys, as always, thank you for watching The Plant Doctor. And until next time, happy gardening.